hi everybody welcome to evening TV I'm evening ransom and today I wanted to talk to you about why the abuser the narcissistic abuser the sociopath why they hate you why you know what is it that they what is it about you that they just can't stand because this has really you know this for the, for those of us who basically have gone through our lives light you know and unable to really pinpoint anything that we've ever done to anyone you know it's it, it, you know you kind of and and what and what I notice is even if you ask them what are you so mad about what did I do to you they don't have an answer they don't have an answer now that's not to say that they don't have an answer they're telling somebody else they certainly have they certainly have something they're telling everybody else but as far as you're concerned there really is nothing they can tell you up here up, you know to your face that they can say they rightfully hate you for <laughs> and 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 I know that how it happened with me was um, with my husband my ex-husband was I really just noticed it one just almost like one day in his eyes I realized this was after I almost died I realized that he hated me. I looked in his eyes and I realized this guy wishes I was dead. And I got really scared. Later, with my parents, it took an outsider to say to me, why do your parents hate you so much? For me to go, for me to, for it to click in, it was just, it was just the right timing, enough had happened that I could hear it. And I, because I'm sure up until then I had been all the time saying, you know, having a ready answer. Oh, you know, they don't hate me. You just don't understand. That's just, you know, they're just. They that's just they have a hard time showing that their love, and they're just that's just how they are. You know, that's what I, I would have said all my life. But for whatever reason, enough had happened at the point when this person said this that I could hear it. And we happen to be. I have this story in another in another video, but. We happened to be um, outside of a courtroom and after all this horrible stuff that I'd been through and this horrible divorce and it just the divorce just got done this is after I almost died after I after this horrible divorce two years in you know just terrible hard time my parents then tried to take my home and so I'm sitting outside a, a courtroom you know where I'm going to go in, where my sons and I are living or my sons and I are living it was my grandmother's home and there were like a, a bunch of different uh, things that they had done with my ex to make it so that they had this case that they could try and get my house. But we're sitting outside the courtroom waiting to go in and they don't even look faced. They look perfectly happy. They're like having a tailgate party, you know, like, you know, it, it was just, it was really crazy. And, uh, and my lawyer actually said to me, why do they hate you so much? And that's when I could hear it. I could, wow, you know, that's true. What it was that he hated about me was that I knew him was that I knew him was that I knew who he was I saw behind I saw behind the curtain and for the rest of us that's intimacy for a healthy person that's that's love that's intimacy that's what you're we want to be known I wanted to be I wanted him to know me I wanted us to be known and so of course I laid my I laid my head right on the my, you know right on the guillotine because I wanted him to know me I was very you know open about who I was and so he let me led me to believe that he was exactly who I wanted, exactly he fulfilled fulfill all of my dreams. And then of course pulled the you know, pulled pulled it all back. What he started to hate about me was first of all, that he he start, he had his own narcissistic supply that he needed, so he needed excitement, he needed something new. So there was that was that happened maybe first. So then he kind of started mistreating me. And then because he was mistreating me and I, that, that, that I saw all that. So I, I knew he wasn't, I knew he wasn't who he pretended to be. I knew that that was an act and that's what he hated about me. That's what he hated about me. And that's why it could never get better. That's why it could only get worse. That's why it was hopeless from the, that was why it was hopeless from the very beginning because that was never going to go away. Now, because he understood that, this is also how he manipulated my parents. My parents hated me for the same reason. 
only the thing was with my parents, it wasn't really true. He just told them it was. He told my parents that I had been talking to him about my childhood and all this abuse and how I had, how I had, I was having flashbacks and all this stuff. It wasn't true. But that's he knew he knew enough about his own psychology. He knew their psychology. He knew how they would work, and he knew he could get them to discard me by telling them that I saw through their their act and and that it was only a matter of time till they were going to be exposed. And you know what? It is somewhat exposure to others. You know, I used to think it was always exposure to others, but even more than that, it's it's the exposure to themselves, and it, they know that it's BS. And maybe even they know that you know it's BS. But what it is 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 that they're angry at you. They hate you because you're refusing. You're no longer going along with the story. You're not playing along with it anymore. That's what it is. Because they even invited me, essentially, invited me back in after they'd done all this horrible stuff. It was clear that they kind of had, there was this, there was this moment in time where my parents were basically trying to act sort of nice and basically saying to me, you can come back and just pretend nothing happened. And if I'd been willing to do that, they would have been willing to do it too. And I even sort of played with it for a minute because I, I was thinking of it in terms of like, well, I don't have to hold a grudge, I can go in there and we can move on. We can move past it. But that wasn't what they were. They were. That wasn't what they wanted to do. They wanted to pretend that nothing. That that they were great parents. They wanted me to go back to believing that they'd be there for me if I needed them. That they were a loyal family. That family mattered. They wanted me to go back to believing what I what I once believed before they before they um, before they took my ex's side and before they before they went out and abused me and discarded me and were disloyal and, and abusive. They wanted me to go back to believing what I believed before they did that. Or at least pretending that I did. At least pretending that I did. And of course, I had no incentive for doing that because my incentive all along, my incentive all along was that, you know, I might have seen through certain things with my parents, but I basically believed that they, I believed the story I told myself was that, yeah, maybe they have a hard time showing me their, that they love me. They have a hard time with affection, and maybe they're a little self-centered, but I know if I really needed them, they'd be there for me. And I know that, you know, if my ex-husband were to turn on me, they'd be there for me. Well, now I know that, was, that wasn't true, you know? And also, they were still friendly with my, with my ex-husband. Did they, did they think that I could just go back to being friendly with him? You know, it was just, uh, they basically, they were inviting me to just, after everyone had abused me and, and just all this terrible stuff had happened, they were just, all they, the best they could do was inviting me to go back to, be, to believing, to just pretending none of it had happened. That was the best that they could do. And when I didn't do that, then their story changed to I left them, to I turned on them and their heartbroken parents because their kid has discarded them. Their kid has turn their back on the family. That, that's the new story. That's the story they tell themselves. And so, um, and my ex-husband, I'm sure that he looks at the whole thing and just, you know, just feels really perfectly proud of himself. That he thinks of me as an idiot. He thinks of my parents as idiots. He thinks of all of us as idiots. He's ruined, he's ruined, you know, ruined my parents' family. And now he wants nothing to do with them. And so he just figures it's their own damn fault. And it, really, he's right about that. It is their own damn fault. <laughs> That's true. But what is, my, what is my fault is that I stayed after I knew I was being abused. And I put up with stuff for way too long, way, way too long. And I just didn't take good care of myself. And so, of course, I left my kids vulnerable too. And if you've got messages, it, you know, granted, I was not set up well to do very well in this, for this to happen. I was, I was set up perfectly to be a target and then to be really disabled when it came to saving myself and saving my kids because I was brought up to put up with abuse and to think of it as normal and have very low expectations for how I was to be treated. 
and to believe that that this could be love that this that 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 abuse wasn't abuse that abuse and neglect was how love looked and felt and so and and I would have to say that I I'm unlike a lot of people that that, that are here visit, watching these channels because I didn't have a clue that I was being abused really I, I didn't I don't think I ever called it abuse ever I thought of it as abuse abuse ever until after I was divorced you know no I was not in the situation thinking about how I could get out or anything like that I'm only I only got out of the situation because they all abandoned me they all completely abandoned me and totally kicked me to the curb you know I never had any smart thoughts about strategic thoughts about how to get out I just was completely thrown under the bus can say is that when he came back around and I guess it is a type of hoovering when he came back around to take me to court um, years later um, that by then I had learned some things by then I was a different person and he didn't get away with it that time that time I was good at defending myself and he didn't win <laughs> he lost he lost he lost everything but um, but he didn't give up easily either and it was a very destructive very painful year that my kids never recovered from so that's it that's what he hates about you he, he or she or whoever they are whether they're your parents or whoever they are what they hate about you most is that you know who they are and you're not going along with their story you're not buying into their false reality that you're confronting their false reality and it's like how dare you they will fight you like they're fighting for their very lives because that is exactly how it is to them and so that's why they're so ferocious that's why they're so aggressive because it is like life or death to them if they lose this false reality it is like a death to them and in a way much like it was to you when they died when you figured out that this is a false reality it was a death to you too if you if you ever asked yourself you know why do they hate me or you or you have anything you can contribute to this conversation please please write your comments below thanks a lot you guys i'll talk to you later bye bye